There have been 239,363 games played in the history of Major League Baseball, which means there have been close to a half a million starting pitchers take the mound at the big league level. According to statistician Bill James's game score, a stat that measures a pitcher's performance in any given game started, there is one performance that stands out as the best of all time. This performance was done by none other than Chicago Cubs Hall of Famer, Kerry Wood. Wood grew up in Irving, Texas, right outside of Dallas, idolizing fellow Texan Roger Clemens and Nolan Ryan. High school baseball in Texas is a little different than the rest of the country, Country, especially if you're a young flamethrowing righty with national attention and comparisons to those childhood idols of Ryan and Clemens. After a stellar high school career, Kerry Wood was drafted fourth overall in the 1995 draft by the Chicago Cubs. During his three years in the minors, Wood's reputation grew and many thought he was ready for the majors at the young age of 20 years old. His fastball was nearing triple digits and he had a slider that seemed to start at the right-handed batter's box and end up in the first base dugout. These pitches gave Wood the tools to be successful in the big leagues. On April 12, 1995, he made his major league debut against the Expos, giving up four runs in four and two thirds innings. Not even 21 years old, barely looks 19 years old, and yet Mark Grace told me yesterday we could be seeing the second coming of Roger Clemens here this afternoon. Overall, his April numbers weren't that much better, finishing with a 5.89 ERA on the month. But going into May, this is when baseball history happened. A battery of Sandy Martinez. And young Kerry Wood going to the mound in search of his third victory. You look at the ERA, way up there at 589, but when he's been good, he's been very good. As the 25 strikeouts in 18 and a third innings would attest. On May 6, 1998, the Cubs were playing game two of a two-game series against the National League Central leading Houston Astros. This Astros team was full of studs and actually had four separate players finish the 98th season with a batting average over 300, including names like Jeff Bagwell, Craig Biggio, and Moise Alou. The hype and Clemens comparisons kind of slowed down after a mediocre April from the rookie, and Wood himself even said that he wasn't feeling too great getting to the ballpark that day in May. In fact, in a 2018 interview with Ryan Dempster, he said that he was feeling very low energy and confirmed that he had a terrible pregame bullpen. I tried to take a deep breath, tried to forget what I did in the bullpen, know that my body was loose, and tried to go get him. The first pitch of the entire game was to Hall of Famer Craig Biggio, and that bullpen feeling might have creeped back into Kerry Wood's mind as a fastball got away from him and actually hit the umpire in the face mask. Whether he knew it or not at the time, Kerry Wood was about to make Major League Baseball history. He struck out the side in the first inning and followed that up with strikeouts with the first two batters of the second inning. Five batters, five strikeouts. So far, a huge Astros team that ended up leading the majors in on-base percentage that season simply could not figure out the 20-year-old rookie. However, in the third inning, Ricky Gutierrez led off with what ended up being the only hit of the ball game for the Astros. The worst part of it was the questionable ruling on the play. With a sharp ground ball hit to the left side, third baseman Kevin Ory tried to go to his left but saw the ball slide off the tip of his webbing and into short left field. Yet the play was ruled a hit and now lives as a point of controversy in Chicago Cubs lore forever. Former Astros color commentator and current Cubs color guy Jim Desch Shays was on the call for that game, and he said in real time that he didn't think that should have been ruled a hit. After watching it now, let me know what you think in the comments. After the first hit of the game, Wood went right back to business and racked up the Ks again, including five straight strikeouts between the fourth and fifth inning. But things did not get to an insane level until the seventh inning of the game, as some raindrops began to fall. One would think that the moisture in the air would make the baseball tougher to grip, but not that day. Starting with Hall of Famer Jeff Bagwell in the top of the seventh, Kerry Wood struck out seven straight hitters. His fastball seemed to be in times two speed while his breaking balls were simply unhittable. Being one strikeout away from tying the major league record for strikeouts in a game, the top of the Astros lineup was coming up and was ready to spoil Kerry Wood's career day, still only down 2-0 to in the game. Yet, after a soft ground ball to short, Craig Biggio was retired, leaving Derek Bell at the plate to tie the record. Here comes the hook! Got him! 20 strikeouts! He ties the major league record! And just like he had done 19 other times that day, Wood finished off his 20th strikeout of the game, tying the record set by one of his childhood idols and fellow Texan, Roger Clemens. Later, Wood admitted that he was so locked in during that ninth inning, he didn't realize how many strikeouts he had had at the time, nor did he even know what the record was for most strikeouts in the game. In fact, he didn't fully understand why everyone in the stadium was so excited during that final at-bat until he was interviewed for the TV broadcast. You can actually see his hand visibly shaking from the pure adrenaline and energy around him in the stadium. Matching any record by your childhood idol at the age of 20 must be one of the most amazing feelings a human being can feel. Wood was one of the most dominant pitchers ever that day, and his game score reflects that. Honestly, game score is not a perfect stat. 
but it sort of quantifies how dominant Kerry Wood was that game. And just to clarify for any game score truthers out there, Kerry Wood's 20 strikeout one hitter is the best score for any non-extra inning game. The true leader in all-time game score was in 1920 when Joe Esker scored 153 in a 26 inning marathon against the Boston Braves. That game actually ended in a tie and it was called for darkness. But what makes that even more of a shame is that the Braves starting pitcher, Leon Kadori finished with a game score of 140, marking the second highest game score of all time. After the game, Eschker told reporters that he thought he threw around 250 fastballs that day and Kodori threw at least 300 curves. Because back then, that's when baseball was baseball. But that's it, folks. If you've made it this far, please hit the like and subscribe button so I can become rich and famous. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.